you might have heard about this exercise fibonacci sequence generator so what is it the fibonacci sequence is a series of numbers where each number is the sum of the two two preceding ones so starting from 0 and 1 that is the sequence so starts from 0 1 1 2 3 so if you see this number starting from 0 1 so the third number is a sum of this two numbers 0 plus 1 is equal to 1 the fourth number is sum of the preceding two numbers so 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 2 plus 1 is equal to 3 So five, if you see three plus two is equal to five. Eight, if you go to see five plus three is equal to eight. So this is a Fibonacci series. Let's see through certain output. For example, if I am going to pass zero as a value, so the output should be empty. If I am passing one as an input, generate the Fibonacci one. If I pass, the output should say zero. If I am passing two, then the output should say zero comma one. If I am passing three, then the output should say zero. Plus one one so zero one one. If I'm passing four, then it should say zero one one two. If I'm passing five, then it should say zero one one two plus three two plus one is equal to three. So like that, this will continue. For example, if you're passing ten, so what is this five represents the number of elements inside this array. So one two three four five. If you see ten, one two three four five six seven eight nine ten. So total elements are ten. If you put zero, it is empty. If you put one, one element, two elements, two means two element, three means three elements. Like that, you have to build a Fibonacci series. So how to do that? Let's see it. Let's write a comment. This is for the Fibonacci. Okay, to create a Fibonacci series, let's create a function. Define generate underscore Fibonacci, and then I'm going to pass a Parameter n, so that means it's going to carry certain value, and accordingly you will do. Now, if you look at for zero, one, and two, this is the fixed output zero one, and then from three you have to write certain logic. So for zero, one, and two, let's write few things. If the n value is provided as n is less than equals to zero, if somebody is providing any value less than equals to zero, then what it should do? Then what you do? Then you return Return uh, a blank list, so it is a blank one. Else, if if n is equals to equals to one, then you return zero. Okay. Else, if if n is equals to equals to two, in that case you return something like this. You say zero return. Zero comma one. So the very first three outputs we are writing in a static way. We are writing in a static way. So let's see how this works. First of all, so I am going to say print, and then I am going to call that function generate Fibonacci, and I am going to pass the argument. What is the argument I am going to pass? Let's say I am going to pass zero. If I am going to pass zero and run the code, you see the output has come blank. Let me clear it. Let's run it again. If you see, the output has come blank. Now, if I am going to pass one here and run the code, how the output is coming? Zero. Last time it was blank. This time it is has a zero. If I am going to pass two here and run it in the array, there are two elements, zero comma one. Okay, so this much is pretty simple. Now, after that, we actually have to write the code. What I will do, I'll create a Fibonacci series, and I'm going to assign a values inside this. I'm going to say zero, comma one. I'm creating a list which has two elements by default. Now I'm going to write a loop for i in range. I'm going to say starting from two, you run it whatever the value from n. For example, somebody is passing the value as three here. Okay, imagine somebody is passing the value as three, so two comma three, so it is the starting point of the loop. This is the end point or the stop point of the loop. So when it reaches that number, it is going to stop. So imagine here in the end value you have three, so the loop will run once and is going to stop. If you have four, it is going to run twice and is going to stop. So because the loop starts from two, so two, it will run. The loop will run and then it will come three 
the loop will run and then the moment reaches that n value 4 for example it is going to stop so here it is 3 then it's going to stop at 3 so that is how the range function works in the for loop now here inside this we have to write a logic what i need i need the next number for the fibonacci correct the next number of the fibonacci and how you generally get the next number the last number and the second last you add right so to get the last number from a list you say fs and then i'm going to say minus one okay this is the last represents your last number that is there inside your list plus i'm going to say fs fs means your fibonacci series this one okay the default one fs and then i'm going to say minus two that means the second last whatever is there inside the fs you're going to add both of them so initially when it is going to run it is going to add 0 plus 1 and it is going to form a number called 1 and that that 1 it will be there in this variable called next number and then what i have to do i have to simply say append append this number into the existing fibonacci series so the existing fibonacci series is 0 comma 1 imagine i am passing 3 so what will happen the loop will start the loop will start and then here it is going to see what is there in the current fs 0 comma 1 what is the last number the last number is 1 what is the second last number which is 0 so 1 plus 0 it will do the value is 1 and it is going to append that so what will happen here you will get a comma and you get another 1 so let's print this and you will get to understand how it works i am going to return the fs okay let's run this i am i have passed the parameter the argument as 3 now if you see what happened the output has come 0 comma 1 comma 1 now think how it is working so here you have passed 3 okay you have here you have passed 3 so in the for each loop 2 comma 3 it is so this is 2 is your starting point and 3 is your stopping point the moment it reaches 3 it is going to stop and the counter will automatically increase the loop will automatically increase you don't have to do i plus one and all that things so when you write a range the loop will automatically run so this is your entire loop so this is going to automatically increase in num the moment it reaches the n value it is going to stop that is how it works okay so imagine you have three here so now the loop has started the very first number in the existing fs is one so one plus zero the value is one so it is going to append that one here and you can see the output has produced something like this zero comma one comma one imagine i'm going to pass 4 here okay i'm going i'm passing 4 and i'm going to run the code look at it what happened now the last two digits were 1 plus 1 in the previous one right so the loop is running and the fs is keep on constructing so the last two numbers were 1 plus 1 so 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 so the output has come 0 comma 1 comma 1 comma 2 similar way this entire series is going to run for example if i'm going to say pass pass 5 and run the code you see 0 comma 1 comma 1 comma 2 comma 3 so 2 plus 1 is equal to 3 so this is the simple logic very simple code look at it define generate the first three elements we have written like this and we have created a, a you know default uh, fibonacci series and then we are providing that fibonacci series and keep on appending the new numbers into it so that way the fibonacci series is getting printed okay so let's enter a big number let's say 11 and i'm going to run it you can see the output has come 0 comma 1 comma 1 comma 2 3 5 8 13 21 34 55 so like that as many numbers you are going to pass it's going to generate let me put a very big number let's say 100 and i'm going to run it you can see the output is huge 0 1 1 2 3 see like that it has printed up to 100 so this is how the fibonacci series code is complete here so for all this the regular learning is important keep coming to my channel and keep watching the new exercises i am going to upload in my channel thanks for watching let's move on to our next exercise